Well, you are in the Strong Museum in our collection storage area, really the, the major collection storage area. You're in our area with many of our electromechanical arcade games live, and I'm standing in front of a game called Atomic Bomber. It's from 1946, so it's actually right after the, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But this is a game that I think tells us a lot about what was going on at the time. It's a game that was made by a company called International Mutoscope. What the coin-op industry was very good at was trying to capitalize on something that was in the popular imagination. And you know, even if we look back at those game, the other games that they made in the early 40s, like Sky Fighter and Ace Bomber, the, the slogans for those games were like, every American needs to know how to shoot. Coming out of World War II, International Mutoscope makes this game, which if you look at the advertising from the time, they sold it as a game that was, let's play something where, that is on everyone's mind, atomic thinking. But as far as we've seen, it was not a controversial game. Right? So it's 1946, and in that moment, we've dropped these atomic bombs. You know, it, it sort of shows how uncontroversial in some ways that decision was. This is purely a bombing game, and so you would, you would stick your head down in here and you'd move this rangefinder back and forth from left to right as the drum spins. You're basically trying to put in crosshairs what are targets on the ground. To me, they look like civilian targets. They, they don't necessarily look like military targets, but again, not necessarily completely controversial at that time. You release a bomb here, and when that happens, you see uh, flashes of red light. You know, so for an audience watching, certainly grabbed their attention, and the next version of the game with the actual atomic bombing on it certainly was something that, uh, that people would talk about. You know, at, at this time, really popular things were like strength testers and fortune tellers and card vendors. You know, so something like Atomic Bomber, they were sort of pioneering in that area. Other companies would also follow suit. You get a lot of these gun games and sort of shooting games of the type that you'd see at any carnival. You know, it, it could be a game that today you may not want to play, you know, because of the content.